This Pita video is for my brother who lives in Colorado. On a recent visit to Boston, he fell in love with the thick pita bread from Angel Company in New Jersey sold at our Whole Foods. It is a wicked good pita. It's nothing at all like the thin, dried up, cardboardy stuff that rips as soon as you put something in it. This one is fluffy and slightly chewy and very flavorful. Since my brother couldn't find it in Colorado, he asked me to create a recipe for him. And just like Chef Jan, I set out to fulfill his food wish. After many tries, I'm happy to report that I got very close. And guess what happened? <laughs> Angel started selling in Colorado. But in case you can't find the glorious pita in your area, here is how you can make it yourself. The real difficulty with pita is getting it to puff up perfectly so that you can stuff it. Out of the recipes that I've tried, the only one that produced perfect and consistent puffing was the one from Cook's Illustrated. But the flavor of the pita left much to be desired. To my taste, they used way too much honey and not enough salt. So I developed my own dough, but used their kneading, shaping, and baking procedures, and the results were fantastic. This dough is somewhat unusual. It has to be made at least one day before baking. Not just overnight, but at least 24 hours. I've noticed that the longer this dough sits in the fridge, the better it tastes. What's strange about this dough is that there is no rising time. As soon as you finish kneading, you shape and refrigerate. There is a bit of rise that happens in the fridge, but not much. After at least one day in the fridge, you roll it out and bake it without a rice. I'm guessing that's what gives you that perfect pocket. Put a mixer on the scale and zero it out. Add 150 grams of fridge temperature water and 150 grams of fridge temperature milk. Using cold ingredients ensures that the dough won't rise prematurely, giving you a big air pocket during baking. Add 56 grams of olive oil, 360 grams of bread flour, and 60 grams of whole wheat flour. This amount worked really well for me during all the testing since we had such a warm and humid winter. But on the day I was filming, it finally got very cold and dry and turned out that I should have used slightly less flour. So learn from my mistake. If you are in a dry climate, start with 330 grams of bread flour and see if you need more. There'll be an opportunity to add more flour during kneading. Add two teaspoons of SAF instant yeast and two teaspoons of sugar. Attach a dough hook and mix on medium-low speed until no dry flour remains and the dough forms. Stop the mixer and let the dough sit for 10 minutes. Restart the mixer on low and add 10 grams of salt. Mix on medium speed until the dough is smooth. It should clear the sides of the bowl, but stick to the bottom. See how mine isn't sticking? This does make it easier to shape, but makes the texture not as bubbly. If you are afraid of sticky doughs, this can be considered a feature since the pita still comes out delicious, but if you can handle a sticky dough during shaping, you'll get an even better pita with a more open crumb. If your dough is sticking not only to the bottom of the bowl, but to the sides as well, that's a signal to add more flour. The next step will get messy, so you want to have all your equipment handy. A scale, a small plate rubbed with olive oil, a half sheet coated in olive oil, a pastry scraper, and a piece of parchment paper. To prevent your baking sheet from sliding around, place it on a damp paper towel. Dump the dough onto the oiled baking sheet. Knead it briefly into a smooth ball. 
then cut it with a pastry scraper into eight pieces. If you want them to be identical, they should be 95 grams each. That's what the little oiled plate and the scale are for. But if you don't mind some being bigger and some smaller, don't worry about weighing them. Bring the edges of the dough towards the center like shaping a dumpling. Then flip each ball over and roll on the counter to make a tight, smooth ball. If you get a dimple on the bottom, seal it up so that the bottom is smooth. Line the same baking sheet in which you were working with parchment and coat it in olive oil. We want to avoid sticking from here on so that the dough doesn't rip. Otherwise, it might not puff up properly. Put the balls seam side down on the oiled parchment and dab with olive oil. Cover very tightly with plastic wrap. Refrigerate for at least 24 hours and up to 4 days. Set the oven rack to the lowest position. Preheat the oven to 450 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes and put flour into a small bowl. Keep track of which side of the bowl is the smooth top and keep it that way during rolling and baking. Place the bowl in a bowl of flour to coat it generously. Place on a work surface and brush off excess flour. Pat it with your hand to flatten out and roll it out to be 6 inches in diameter. This diameter is good for a 95 gram bowl of dough. That's why it's a good idea to portion the dough perfectly if this is your first time and you don't yet have intuition for how thick to roll the dough. Brush of excess flour and place the pita on parchment paper. Roll out another bowl. Slide the parchment with two pitas directly onto the oven rack using a rimless baking sheet. Bake for two minutes. Flip them over by sliding the spatula from the outside to the inside of the oven. This will prevent them from sliding where they shouldn't. Bake for another 2-3 to three minutes or until they are puffed and the bottom is golden. Get them out onto the baking sheet with tongs and get the parchment paper out too. Place them on a paper towel lined baking sheet and brush with butter on both sides. Cover with a paper towel and a dish towel and repeat with the other pitas, adding them to the towel covered baking sheet. Let rest for 10 minutes and serve. See? A perfect pocket. I only had one that didn't puff and even this one was fairly easy to separate with my hands. My favorite way to eat this pita is to make a chicken sandwich. The video for it is below, but a big plate of hummus is great too. This one is from Rafika's Kitchen channel. She has a phenomenal hummus technique. The link is below as well. My only improvisation was adding some smoked paprika. Here are some good questions that my brother asked me about this recipe and I'm sure you might want to know the answers too. Is it necessary to use dairy? No, you can replace the milk with water and skip the butter brushing in the end. If this dough sits in the fridge and doesn't rise much, is it possible to bake it right away? Right after you shape the balls, it would be difficult to roll them out since you need to give gluten a chance to relax. But I tried rolling out and baking one ball after only one hour in the fridge. The texture of this pita was dense and doughy and it didn't taste very good. So the answer is that there is really no way to rush this process. You really need to give this dough 24 hours in the fridge. What if working with a wet dough is too difficult? If you want a more open crumb without the difficulty of working with a very wet dough, let your pita sit in the fridge for three days instead of one. How do you rewarm the pita? After the pitas are baked and cooled completely, put them into a Ziploc bag and keep at room temperature for up to a day or freeze for longer storage. To rewarm, wrap tightly in foil, stacking no more than two pitas together and bake at 350 Fahrenheit until hot. This will take about 
about 7 minutes if starting from room temperature pitas and 15 minutes if starting from frozen. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out and if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.